everybody. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, I'll get right to it. Uh, bad news first. The president is actively working to undermine our democracy, usurp the will of the people, and hold on to power in violation of our Constitution. Good news. He's really bad at it. The president is desperate to somehow throw out the votes for Biden, but like everything else in his administration, it's a race between autocracy and incompetence. And with this crowd, incompetence is Usain Bolt. Makes it across the finish line, steps in a bucket, gets his head stuck in a toilet. Tell you all about the hilarious Kunanigans in tonight's edition of Dead people vote, dead people vote, I saw them vote, they are zombies, they vote and then they eat some brains, they gave Biden the state of Maine, it makes sense if he's not cocaine, dead people vote. The road from the White House. He's got a really lovely voice, actually. Considering how hard he's working to keep the job, the president sure isn't doing much of it. For the 11th time since the election, his schedule today listed no public events. Maybe that's just how he observes quarantine. He never leaves the house unless he knows he's spreading the virus. Apparently, El Presidente has even canceled his plans to travel to Mar-a-Lago for Thanksgiving, deciding to stay in Washington instead. Smart move. The minute he steps out of there, you know they're changing all the locks. But as much as he wants to deny reality, the POTUS, who lost the VOTUS, Cannot escape it. For instance, when he looks out his north-facing windows, he can see the reviewing stand for Biden's inaugural parade being re-erected on his front lawn. Ooh, it's like watching your wife go on a date with someone else on your front lawn, getting re-erected. And this time, a lot of people are going to show up to watch. But the president is running out of time. One by one, the states are starting to certify the results. And that will be the end of his one term. And before that consummation devoutly to be wished, the Republicans are throwing some pretty disgraceful Hail Marys. Take yesterday in Michigan, the canvassing board of the state's largest county, Wayne County, which includes Detroit, is half Republican, half Democrat to make it nonpartisan. But last night, the two Republicans refused to certify the results and the board ended up deadlocked two to two. Oh, what to do to try today to deadlock two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm all warmed up. Here's what happened. The Republicans claimed to be concerned that in Detroit, there were minor discrepancies in which the number of votes cast did not match the number of voters listed as having shown up to vote. This is something that happens everywhere. So it is outrageous that the Republican chair said she would be open to certifying the vote in communities other than Detroit. Oh, hell no. You can't disenfranchise Motown. Each one of those votes was signed, sealed, delivered. You can't turn our democratic process into a ball of confusion just to appease the tears of a clown. I could go on. Whatever the reason... He's telling me not to. Whatever the reason, <laughs> racism was the reason. The president's team was thrilled, especially campaign legal advisor and woman telling you you'll never leave this timeshare seminar alive, Jenna Ellis. She tweeted, breaking this evening, the county board of canvassers in Wayne County, Michigan, refused to certify the election results. If the state board follows suit, the Republican state legislator will select the electors. Don't know if this is your first coup d'etat, but you're kind of giving away the game here, Jenna. As long as you're writing fascist fan fiction, why not just go for it? Then the tanks will roll through the streets and we will arrest everyone with an I voted sticker and change the national anthem to YMCA, but this time the village people is all cops. The president was also thrilled with the fall of democracy, tweeting, wow, Michigan just refused to certify the election results. Having courage is a beautiful thing. The USA stands proud. Just one problem with the president's premature celebration. The president tweeted those words at the exact moment that the two Republicans on the board decided they didn't want people pooping on their front lawn for the rest of their lives and agreed to certify the results. The president's tweet is like that moment halfway through Star Wars when Darth Vader says this. Yavin 4 had it coming. Big win for the Empire. Having courage is a beautiful thing. The Death Star stands proud. Oops. 
kind of cute when he does it. So why did the Republicans back down? Well, it turns out voters aren't that keen on having their votes thrown out. And after news of the deadlock got out, the board held a meeting for public comments and requests to join the Zoom call quickly went beyond capacity. You know something is terribly wrong when people voluntarily join a Zoom call. Now, the two Republicans in question are Wayne County canvassing board member and hottest guy on FarmersOnly.com, Will Hartman, and fellow board member and woman singing all the words to Gold Digger at the Kentucky Derby's karaoke night, Monica Palmer. Turns out the public was not shy about letting them have it personally, especially this guy. I just want to let you know that the Trump stick, the stain of racism that you, William Hartman, and Monica Palmer have just been covered yourself in is going to follow you throughout history. Monica Palmer and William Hartman will forever be known in southeastern Michigan as two racists. The law isn't on your side. History won't be on your side. Your conscience will not be on your side. And Lord knows when you go to meet your maker, your soul is going to be very, very warm. Thank you. <laughs> well, Thank you for telling me I'll be spending eternity burning on a lake of fire. I'll pack something light. Oh, you also say I can go pleasure myself? Again, thank you. Uh, it would be consensual. After three hours of being pelted with rocks and garbage, the meeting went on mute for five minutes. And when it came back on, Hartman informed the crowd that they had just voted unanimously to certify the results. So that's it? That's all it took? Is that easy to stop your devious plan? For Pete's sake, if all fascists were that weak, we could have avoided World War II with one propaganda poster. Hey, Hitler, is that a mustache or have you been kissing Mussolini's ass? <laughs> Things are also going poor that you're shaking your head at that one. Did I go too far? Did I go too far? Do you think I hurt Hitler's feelings with that one? Things are also going poorly for the president in Pennsylvania. The state Supreme Court did not believe their lie that they weren't allowed poll watchers, which was quite a blow for the president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, seen here putting air quotes around the word lawyer. <laughs> Yesterday, Rudy was making the same makeup observer argument in federal court on the other side of Pennsylvania when he got taken down by his old nemesis, words. Because as he was reading his own team's complaint to the judge, he said, I'm not quite sure I know what opacity means. It probably means you can see, right? To which the judge said, it means you can't. To which Rudy said, big words, your honor. To which the judge said, you're an imbecile. To which Rudy said, wrong, your honor. I'm an Italian. In another example of closing the barn door after the cows voted for somebody else, the president is still firing anyone who dares challenge his Dexy-induced fever dreams. Case in point, the U.S. top election cybersecurity official and treasurer of the Dead Poets Society, Christopher Krebs. Last week, Krebs' agency issued a statement declaring the November 3rd election was the most secure in American history, and he regularly fact-checks the claims and conspiracy theories being pushed by the president, his allies, and supporters around the country. And it surely got under the president's honey-glazed skin that Krebs' Twitter page says, keep calm and count on. And his profile pic is, uh, I'm going to guess, store brand Captain America, Kirkland, Steve Rogers, the superhero on the children's flip-flops you bought at the dollar store. Anyway, true to form. Last night, the con artist soon to be formally known as president tweeted, the recent statement by Chris Krebs on the security of the 2020 election was highly inaccurate in that there were massive improprieties and fraud, including dead people voting, poll watchers not allowed into polling location, glitches in the voting machines. Therefore, effective immediately, Chris Krebs has been terminated. You dummy. You don't fire the election security guy after we already had the secure election? How can you be this bad at criming? Yeah, copper, I know you got me. I have the right to remain silent. Now give me all your money and nobody gets hurt. And I've escaped. Evidently, the president's tweets caused a disturbance in the force because Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill, responded, 
Translation, the recent statement by Chris Krebs was highly accurate and that there were no improprieties or fraud confirmed by all credible 2020 election officials sworn under oath to be truthful. Therefore, he has been terminated for refusing to lie for me, your hashtag liar in chief. Wow. Luke Skywalker is a Jedi master and a political pundit. Y you got to give the guy a hand. Seriously, his father cut one of them off. When Krebs saw Hamill had weighed in, he responded, in defending democracy, do or do not, there is no try. This is the way. Hashtag protect 2020. Damn! Krebs bringing the nerd cred. Talk like Yoda, Krebs dib. I say Krebs dib. That is, I, I stand by it. Verbs to the end of sentences, Krebs moved. And here I thought he was a half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder. And Krebs maintained defiant after his firing, tweeting, Honored to serve, we did it right. Defend today, secure tomorrow. Strong, bold. But I will point out that he spelled tomorrow, Tom Raro. But who am I to judge? That's not how we spell it today, but perhaps it could be how we spell it. Tom Raro. As far as I'm concerned, this man is an American hero. <laughs> We've got a great show for you tonight. Matthew McConaughey is here, but when we come back, Kamala Harris goes back to Washington. Nerd Kreb.